Hi, thanks for watching. I'm Lisa Dunham from Merrifield Real Estate. Today we are going to cover some basic information with regards to gaining and maintaining a rental property. So first off, what does it mean to be a tenant? So essentially a tenant is a person or a group of people that occupies um, a piece of land, a house or an office and essentially they lease that property for a period of time and we call them the lessee. When you're a tenant, you do have certain responsibilities and things that you need to worry about. That can be things like signing a lease contract, making sure that you actually have a lease agreement in place with your lessor, making sure that you maintain a property and making sure that you pay rent on time. So what's first? The first thing you need to think about is are you financially ready? You need to think whether or not you can afford a certain amount of rent and find out how much you can afford. So when you're thinking about that, we're looking at between 30 to 35% of your overall income per week is what you can afford on a rental property. You also need to have a think about saving for bond and rent. One of the biggest items that you need to save for is your bond and your first two weeks worth of rent. So overall, you're looking at six weeks worth of rent all up that you need to save for just to move into that rental property. So save, save, save. You also need to wonder whether or not you might need some help to pay for the rent. So have a think if you can't just afford it on your own, perhaps look to have a friend or even a group of friends move in with you and then that way you can share and divide. If you're looking at moving into a rental property with a group of friends, we would always recommend that, say if there's three or four of you, that all of you go into the property as a tenant each. This means that all of you are equally responsible, not just one. So when you have a think about moving in with a group of friends and only one of you is moving in as a tenant and the rest are moving in as approved occupants, that means that only the tenant is the one person responsible for everyone else living in the property. So make sure you're either comfortable with that or that you're covering your back bases and making sure that you've actually got all of you in as a tenant in the property. Organising a viewing. This is probably one of the most crucial steps that you have when looking for a rental property. You need to make sure that you're looking through the property before you apply to make sure it's big enough for you, it's in the right area, it has everything that you need. So that could be parking, you might have pets that you're needing to home, you need to make sure that that property is pet friendly. Um, it could even go through to things such as heating and size of bedrooms and storage. One of the biggest things with viewings is, especially in the market at the moment, it's extremely tough and extremely high demand at the moment. So you really need to make sure that if you book in for a viewing, that you get to that viewing on the first chance that you can and don't miss it because you will miss out. One of the best places to find rental properties is online. You can either go through to uh, realestate.com.au, which is where most agents and owners will advertise their properties. Otherwise, you can also have a look at the domain website, which also has others, or you can always have a look at our website as well if you want to. One of the big things that we do like to bring up with people is making sure that you don't fall for scams. A lot of people tend to look through Facebook or even Gumtree if they can't find a rental property. And we tend to find that this is where a lot of unethical people are looking for uh, scamming you essentially. They're trying to get money from you because they know how high the demand is. So be very wary of any properties that you do potentially apply for or want to go for through Facebook or Gumtree. You always want to make sure that you physically walk through the property and you meet the owner face to face. So when you're viewing the property, a couple of hints and tips for you. Number one, it's a property manager's pet hate when people park in the driveway. If you come to a viewing, park on the curb or on the roadside and walk up to the property from there. 
One of the biggest things as well is making sure that you're on time. Most viewings will only go for 10 to 15 minutes maximum, so making sure that you're either early or smack on time is excellent. It also gives the property manager or the owner a really good first impression of you, and first impressions count. At this point, we are judging quite a lot on face value. So making sure that you're polite, you're well dressed, you've got shoes on, um, and if you do happen to bring friends with you that they're also being polite as well because they might ruin your chances if they're not doing the right thing. So you've been through the property, you've found the one that you want, what's next? You need to apply. Given the way the market is at the moment with the demand being so high, we always recommend a ma maximum of 24 hours before you put your application in. Any longer than that, you can risk actually missing out because a lot of people are getting it in straight away. So when you're needing to apply for a property, you need to make sure you've got everything ready. Most agents these days will actually let you apply online, which is excellent because you can actually set up your user and your profile ready to go. So once you've done that viewing, you can just hit the send button and it's all done and dusted. You also need to make sure that you've got all of your ID ready to go as well. Now, some agents will require more, some agents might require less, but ultimately you need to prove your identity, you need to prove where you've been and you need to prove your income. If you can't do those three things, it will take longer to process your application. And again, you might miss out you've been approved, congratulations. So from here, you've got two really, really important steps. The very first one is signing your lease agreement. Being brand new to the rental market, I would highly recommend that you make the opportunity to sit in front of your landlord or your property manager and have them go through the lease agreement with you word for word. You need to make sure that you as a tenant or a lessee now fully understand that legally binding contract that you're about to sign. There's a lot of rights and responsibilities in there for you and a lot of rights and responsibilities in there for the landlord as well. So you need to make sure that you fully understand what you're signing. Ask as many questions as you need to. That's what we're here for. The next one is once you move into the property is going through your property condition report. Now this is a big, scary report, and sometimes they're really thick. They have lots of photos attached to them, and essentially they go through the whole house, room for room, inside and out, and they tell you the colour of the walls, the type of carpet, if there's damage, if it's clean, and if it's working. This is your option and your opportunity at the very beginning of the lease to either agree with your property manager or your landlord about how that property is being presented to you at the start of your lease. If there's things in there that you don't agree with, such as damage on a wall that's not been noted, or windows being dirty that have been noted as clean, make sure you take photos and write it on that report and get it back to your agent within seven days. If you miss that cutoff, they essentially assume that you're agreeing with the condition of the property that's how you need to leave it at the end. So make sure you cover your bases and go through those two documents as thoroughly as you can. So you've moved in, now you need to look after the property. Yes, that means you've got to clean and unfortunately mum and dad aren't always going to be there to do it for you. So what do you need to do? One of the biggest things that we always look at is that you're maintaining the property now is exactly the same way as when you received it. So that means making sure that you are giving it a thorough clean, especially when your routine inspections are coming along. One of the big things that we do see though is that some tenants will be up until two, three o'clock in the morning the night before their inspection, strenuously cleaning to get ready. If you do little bits day by day or week by week, it makes that job so much easier and then you don't have as much to do when your inspection's coming around and it's far less stressful. The next things that you need to think about is gardening. Especially when you're viewing a property, you need to have a look at what's included outside. If you're on half an acre property and it's full of massive gardens, you need to maintain them. That means weeding, watering, pruning, you name it. It's all up to you and it's your responsibility. So making sure again that you're doing those items each week or each fortnight just makes it that little bit easier on you in the long run. 
The next ones you need to think about is if there's any maintenance. If you have any repairs that need to be done, whether they be hot water systems not working properly, air conditioners that need to be serviced or dripping taps, make sure you let your property manager know. We're there to help you and to make sure that the owner is maintaining the property well and that means looking after maintenance and repairs. You're not going to get kicked out for letting us know that things need to be fixed. The next one that you really need to be worried about as well is if you happen to damage anything or if any of your guests happen to damage anything, it's still your responsibility. So you need to make sure that if you've accidentally put a hole in the wall or broken a window, that you contact us, your property managers or your owners and you let us know what's happened. We can put you in touch with contractors that can help you fix it or we could organise it for you. Either way, it is your responsibility and at your cost to repair. So being open and honest with us always results in a better outcome in the long run. So as a tenant, there's also things that you're not responsible for. These are things that come back to the owner's responsibility. And sometimes these might not be so well known to most people compared to others. These can be things such as general house repairs and maintenance. So for example, dealing with dripping taps, um, cupboard handles that might be loose or doors that might need to be adjusted because they're rubbing along the carpet. It can even go through right through to gutter cleaning, making sure that your downpipes are clear and it's allowing storm water to come away from your property. If there's massive mould issues in the house, Sometimes that can indicate that there's moisture problems within the property. So we need to make sure that we're actually looking for any underlying problems that there could be possible issues happening with the house. It can even go through to fixing hot water systems. By no means do you need to be having cold showers if your electric hot water system has kicked the bucket and it's not working anymore. We need to make sure that we fix those items within 24 hours of you letting us know. We have strict rules in place that we need to be making sure that the owners are covering and making sure that they're doing the right thing. So when there's certain items that need to be done, such as burst water pipes, gas leaks, no hot water, or massive water leaks through the property, we have to have someone there within 24 hours. That's under our current legislation. So making sure that you contact your property manager straight away, the minute you notice anything that needs to be done, always perfect. Thank you very much for watching our Rentals 101 session. I hope that you've learnt some really helpful and impactful information today. Have a look at the next slide for some items that you need to remember and good luck. I hope it all goes well.